beautiful Tuesday after the typhoon. Ah, it's fantastic. Unless you live on that poor little island down south. I sometimes find myself repeating the same things on these vlogs because a subject came up and I realised I've spoken about it before and that's asthma and cycling. Now I've told my story before, I'll probably repeat a bit of that but it came up on um, a very popular YouTube channel called Burn Peak. It turns out he's um, been he's been using salbutamol for a very long time and uh, quite a lot of you quite a lot of people in the comments have been using it as well what i didn't see was people in the comments using any kind of maintenance medicines and i thought that was a bit concerning because you know they're all sucking away on this salbutamol like there's some pro cyclists with a tue and they're all complaining about you know it makes them feel jittery and you know the side effects of it well I haven't touched my salbutamol inhaler for months now. I should say salbutamol sulfate inhaler. Because the reason I don't use that is because I use salbutamol fluticasone. Now I have mentioned it before. If you are using salbutamol sulfate more than once per day, uh, you should be seeing a pulmonologist because that's too much. If it's getting to the point where you're getting jittery feelings, um, you're actually abusing that medicine. Really you are. You need to see somebody and get some help. So butamol sulfate is a rescue inhaler. That's what you use when you're having the asthma attack. Silbutamol fluticonate, fluticasone, I knew I'd get that wrong. That's uh, a maintenance. It's to prevent you from having the asthma attack. Now it's not for everyone. And this is not medical advice. So I don't know what the cost of those medicines are, wherever you are in the world. I know here in the Philippines I can get salbutamol sulfate for under 250 pesos and uh, fluticasone is under 550 and that requires a prescription uh, whereas this um, the sulfate doesn't it's over the counter so that might be different where you are and I'm wondering if people don't use these rescue medicines uh, simply for the cost I mean yeah you're looking at double the cost so there's always, always people looking for a cheap way out. One of the cheap options people like to, uh, to, to do is diet. i got to tell you, there's a lot of BS around that. There is no food and there is no diet that will cure asthma. And one of the most popular ones is, of course, the vegan diet. Now, I've got no problem with a vegan diet. Um, I quite like vegan food because I just quite like eating vegetables. I'm not a huge fan of eating meat. But it's not going to cure anything. People don't get it. When you go on a vegan diet or a healthier diet, you're cutting out a lot of processed crap. That's what's triggering it. It's all the sulfites and the additives and the food colorings. All that crap with a number. Yeah, don't be fooled by these people trying to sell you something, trying to convince you to cut something out. You know, these fads, these athletic greens, carnivores, vegans and everything. You know, follow the money. Follow the money. Don't just listen to what they say and take it as gospel. Follow the money. If you type in asthma and cycling, there's not a lot there. There's a couple from GCN. I don't really bother with them, but most of it doesn't even mention um, any kind of maintenance program. They just they give you all these tips and tricks, but it's it's kind of pointless, really. So I'm going to climb the Asin Road today. 
It's one of my favourites. It's really steep at the start, then it's rolling all the way into Nungali Sun. It's a beautiful ride, and it'd be a shame if you missed out on it, you know, just because you felt you couldn't do it, you know, because, oh, I have asthma. Well, you know, it's not, it's not going to chain you to the desk. In fact, the worst thing you could do is stay at your desk. If you're starting on a climb, and you think you just need to take a few hits of the salbutamol, well, that's a temporary solution. You're just going to keep doing it again and again. You're not helping. You're probably making it worse. Because if you uh, take too much salbutamol, as everyone knows, it makes you feel jittery. Uh, yeah, some people even get headaches. So, <laughs> It's diminishing returns. You think the more you puff, the faster you go. And that's just not the case. Now I'm not speaking as a pro racer or anything. That's a different ball game. Because with uh, you know, a long-term asthma, you've essentially got uh, not VO2, but VO1.5. So you can't do the big oxygen transfer that your muscles and your cardio require. As an asthmatic you should be able to do that climb. Now if you're on maintenance, the problem is no one's listening. I've made three videos now and every other video I've seen, not one person other than myself mentions maintenance medicines. I've only taken one puff once a day of the fluticasone and here I am. Now I'm not going to win any races. I'm not going to get a Strava KOM. But that's not the point. The point is, I can come out on a beautiful day on my bike and not feel like I'm going to die. And the same should go for you. So if you're not on maintenance medicine, if you're just sucking away on salbutamol inhalers, you're not doing yourself any favours. So wake up and go and see a pulmonologist. How many more of these videos do I have to make? Anyway, uh, I'm about to head out on another ride. As you can see, I finally got a haircut. Bit of a different look. But I'm just going to end this video there. Yeah, look, no one's, no one's listening. I'll probably have to make this video again in 12 months time. But you go and see a pulmonologist, get it under control. it just make your life so much easier. Yeah, I don't know why people don't. But anyway, um, that's it. That's my little public service announcement. So, uh, yeah, cheers. Thanks for watching, and um, catch you in the next one.